4.3 rotations. A rotation is a transformation in which a figure is turned about a fixed point called the center of rotation. Rays drawn from the center of the rotation to a point and its image form the angle of rotation. Like this picture here. So here's our picture of a flag. I'll kind of highlight what the picture is. It's a little flag. Um, here's our Q point at the end of the flag. And if I connect that to my P point, which is the center of rotation, and we want to rotate it 40 degrees counterclockwise, this angle right here between these two rays creates that 40 degree angle of rotation. In this class, we're mostly going to be rotating about the origin, which is the zero, zero part on a coordinate point. And we're going to be uh, rotating counterclockwise, which is up and to the left. So opposite of clockwise, you're going up and to the left around the origin. So because we're going to be rotating around the same uh, center point, we have rules for different degrees of rotation. The ones we're going to use the most, or the one that, I th that comes up the most, is definitely rotation of 90 degrees. So here's an example. If I take point A, B, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees, that's represented right here with this 90 degree angle from here to here. So then the rule is to take your A coordinate, make your Y coordinate, and your B coordinate, make it your X coordinate, but the opposite sign. So here's your rules for different degrees of rotation. Again, we'll probably use this one the most, uh, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. Example number one. Graph quadrilateral RSTU with vertices R at 3, 1, S at 5, 1, T at 5, negative 3, and U at 2, negative 1. And what we would like to do is graph its image after a 270 degree rotation around the origin. So again, we can look up here at our degrees of rotation. So 270 degrees goes three uh, quadrants. So here was quadrant one, two, three, and then it, um, it comes all the way around to this last spot. So we're gonna be rotating this image up and around. So it's going to land kind of in this region right here. It's gonna turn about all the way around to about this spot. Now the best way to do it is to use the rule. So the rule for a 270 degree rotation is B comma negative A. So we're just gonna find R, S, T, and U prime. So R prime, we want B, so that's our B value is a one comma negative a, so instead of a positive three, a negative three. S prime, b is a one, and negative a will be negative five. T prime, b is negative three, and then a would be negative five, negative a would be negative five. And u prime, b is negative one, and a, negative a would be negative two. So now we just plot those coordinate points and make sure that it looks like the correct rotation. So one, negative three for r prime, one, negative five for s prime, negative three, negative five for t prime, and negative one, negative two, for U prime. So this picture rotated this direction 270 degrees. That's 270, sorry. Example number two. Graph JKL and it with vertices JK and L and its image after a 90 degree rotation 
J is at 3, 0. K is at 4, 3. And L is at 6, 0. And we'd like to turn this 90 degrees. So it's just going to go one quadrant this direction. So really that pointed part is going to turn and it's going to start pointing. So instead of pointing up, it's going to turn and point to the left. So the rule for 90 degrees is negative B comma A. So J prime is going to land zero is just stays zero. So zero three. K prime is going to land at negative 3, 4, and L prime is going to land at 0, 6. So if we plot that, 0, 3, negative 3, 4, and 0, 6. We can see that this triangle turned 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now you can also make composition of transformations with rotations. So you can, uh, rotations can be used in compositions with translations or slides and reflections, that's the mirror. So let's try it. <clears throat> it says graph RS, so a line with endpoints 1, negative 3, and 2, negative 6. And it says we'd like to do a reflection in the y-axis. So reflections are best if you just count in the y-axis, so R is one space away from the y-axis, so it's going to go one space away on the other side. And S is two spaces away from the y-axis, so two spaces away. This is the y-axis. So there's a reflection in the y-axis. And then we want to do a 90-degree rotation around the origin. I think the best way to do that is to use the rule. So again, a 90-degree rotation is negative B comma A. But we want to do that onto R prime and S prime. So what you need to do is you need to find where those coordinate points are. So R prime is living at negative 1, negative 3. And S prime is living at negative 2, negative 6. So now that you have those coordinate points, you can apply this rule and get your double prime coordinate points. So R double prime is going to live at 3 and then negative 1. And then S double prime is going to live at 6, negative 2. Now we can plot that 3, negative 1, and 6, negative 2. So this is R double prime and S double prime. So what's happening is that you're rotating this line, this red line, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Pause this video and try this last composition on your own, and then you can check together. A is at negative 4, 4. B is at negative 1, 7. And we want to do a translation of left, two, and down one. So I'm just going to count that. Left, two, and down one. So that's going to be A prime. Left, two, and down one. That's going to be B prime. So left, two, and down one. So then these coordinate points are at negative. I'll just write it over here. So A prime is at negative six, three. And B prime is at negative three, six. And then we want to apply a 90 degree rotation. So again, that's negative B comma A. So then our A double prime is going to land at negative three, negative six. 
and B double prime is going to land at negative 6, negative 3. So negative 3, negative 6, A double prime, and negative 6, negative 3, B double prime. So again, this red line, this red line is rotating another 90 degrees around the, around the origin. Thank you.